Hi, Professor. Um, this is my presentation for the position paper, um, and I did it on why it's immoral to do animal testing. Um, for starters, animal testing has been a major topic because it forces people to juggle the benefits of mankind over the suffrage of animals because we force these creatures to become pincushions for our own benefit as humanity in a way because of the tests we do on them and i believe it is immoral because in some cases the ends don't justify the mean there's no real reason as to why the animal needs to suffer in order to benefit humanity in this in a sense another reason is because there are new alternatives that i will get into later that people can use rather than testing on rats, mice, cats, dogs, etc. Um, some people may argue that it's benefiting both parties, both the animal and the humans, and they share more or less of a mutual relationship when doing this. However, at the end of the day, there is no real guarantee that the creature or the drug that is tested on said creature will actually be used and um, I'll get into that in further detail as well. Well, For starters, the ends don't necessarily justify the means and that is because when an animal is tested on, it's not a one-time deal. And I say this like, a person isn't just going to do one test on a animal. They're going to need to do multiple tests to see how it works in different environments, different how different effects and different things may work depending on what they're testing. If say if it was for a makeup line, what if they were to use different forms of substances on said skin? It creates a never-ending cycle, so to speak, of them testing different effects on this creature and there's no guarantee that one any of them will work or two that they'll ever stop until the animal either dies or it's proven ineffective. The second thing is once these tests are over most of the time the animal is euthanized afterwards whether or not it's healthy in pain regardless they're usually euthanized afterwards due to them no longer being useful. And finally, when they are euthanized, if the uh, testing isn't found to be what is needed, it becomes more like needless slaughter than it does a sacrifice by the animal. Because when you think about it, the animal has no choice in doing it. It's not given a choice to, you know, become the said pincushion. It's being taken, primed and pronged, and then given, you know, these tests and drugs. And once it's done, it's like, congratulations. You served no real purpose because the drug didn't work. And now because we've tested these things on you, you'll have to be euthanized. And that is not a very good thing to do to an animal. Some people might say, however, that when it comes to animal experimentation, there is no real substitute. Because of the complexities of the human body and just bodies in general, Sometimes the way they work, the way they function, there's no real substitute that we have created in order to... How do I word this? There's no way, real way to test it without there being a physical living host. And in some cases, that is that makes sense. What's it called? Because there's no real substitute for a functioning human system or... Function, functioning similar animal system. What's it called? And with these animals, by testing on them, we are creating a way out for ourselves, so to speak. Because if we didn't test on them, we would have to do it on people. 
which one in and of itself is a terrifying thing to process because you know you wouldn't want your mother or your brother or whoever else to be experimented on to prime same thing as the creatures so it's kind of creating a way out however there are newer alternatives that do create a reasonable substitute now. We've gotten to the point where we have made 3D printing possible for human organs such as livers, hearts, kidneys, among other things. And there are also new things called, um, I believe it's pronounced vitro? vitro? There are vitro alternatives, and it's the creation of, say, human skin and other human parts in a petri dish. And it allows scientists to experiment on that rather than a living host. What's it called? This was done, there was a study done from two, 1996 to 2013, and these tests were proven effective. And because of that, even without a working system, they were able to see how different chemicals react into human flesh without literally anyone getting hurt. So because of that, and we, because we have these new methods, it would be better to switch over to these forms of tests because no one is getting hurt. And it gives creatures such as dogs, cats, the animals being tested on the opportunity to have a better life because they're not going to be caged up or, yeah, they're not going to be caged up or hurt their entire lives. They're going to have an opportunity to be adopted or to be free, so to speak. And finally, there's no guarantee for success for any of these drugs to begin with. Granted, that's the whole idea of testing it, is to see whether or not something will work. But even then, even if it's proven successful, there's no guarantee that it will ever actually be put out into the world. Because of this, there is also the possibility of something working, but because it's in a specific environment. When an animal is being tested on, they're being monitored 24-7, they're in a very stressful environment. And because of this, there's no guarantee that this creature that's in a stressed out environment 24-7, if a drug or something works on it, there's no guarantee it'll work for someone who's, say, relaxed most of the time, sitting on their couch, able to sleep and eat when and when they want. It's becomes less likely because of the circumstances they're in and because of that sorry i lost my train of thought because of that it's it i'm sorry because of this um they become much more likely or much more unlikely to work to begin with is what i'm trying to say um, in summary, um, animal testing is an immoral thing because it juggles, um, the benefits of mankind with the well-being of these creatures we share the world with. Um, I believe that the ends don't justify the means and that these creatures should have a way of living, especially since we have these other alternatives such as 3D printing and the virtual alternatives. I understand that there's no real... There's no real substitute for an actual living organism and the fact that we'll have to experiment on ourselves or on people in order to get that is a major thing. But if there's no real guarantee for success to begin with and there's no, because of the situation these animals are put through and put in, it's not worth the risk is what I wanted to put across. I am very sorry about this because I realize I stuttered and stumbled a lot, but this was my presentation, so I hope you have a good day. Bye.